Hello. Um, thank you for joining. Um, so today uh, we'll talk about uh, the functional safety certification methodology for the Red Hat eVehicle OS. So let me share my screen. Okay, so again, thank you for joining. Um, I am Gabriele Paloni, uh, I work for uh, Red Hat. Um, some introduction about myself. I am a senior principal uh, software engineer working in Red Hat. I am the technical leader for the functional safety in vehicle operating system that indeed is a Linux-based operating system. Um, I joined Red Hat uh, quite recently in July of this year. Uh, prior to that, I was working in Intel Mobileye for functional safety automotive and industrial solutions. And uh, I mean, in the last couple of years, I've been quite involved uh, in safety critical Linux. I I was I still am the uh, governing board chairman of the uh, ELISA Linux Foundation project, and uh, I also chair the safety architecture working group um, in ELISA. Um, so, and in general, I have a sort of mixed background between functional safety and uh, uh, kernel driver developments. So what are we going to talk today? Um, first, we will look um, at the complexity of the certification for Linux, um, how the cake is made. So how, what are the different layers that you know, constitute the Red Dot vehicle OS? What are the pillars of our safety argumentation? Okay. And then we'll, I will explain uh, the weaknesses and remediation evaluation technique that is uh, um, something new that we have developed uh, internally in, uh, in Red Hat. Uh, then I will explain the Indian OS functional safety qualification flow in the perspective of the current safety standards. Okay. And finally, I will leave. Uh, time for questions and answers. So the complexity of the certification. The Red Dot in vehicle OS Linux distribution is uh, complex, like every other Linux operating system in general. Um, so the, the, the point was, the difficulty was effectively, how can we find a, a tailored approach that would make it feasible to, to certify Linux, okay? And uh, one of the challenge was also safety element out of context versus safety element in context. So as Red Dot, our aim is to deliver a safety element out of context that can be adopted, you know, across multiple OEMs on different hardware, okay, and uh, across different use cases. However, as you know, the, the safety element out of context usually are difficult to integrate because when the OEM starts to integrate it, then there are always mismatches with respect to the assumed safety requirement and conditions of use. So how do we accommodate a safety element out of context into a specific context? So what we do in Red Hat, we collaborate 
directly with our partners, our vendors and OEM, so that we make sure that when we define the assumed safety requirements and condition of use, these are fully compatible with their context of, uh, of, of integration, okay? So, and effectively, this is how we, you know, how we make sure that our distribution is, is, uh, is working effectively for, uh, for our customers. Also, we have the problem of the continuous development. As you know, Linux is continuously evolving and it's pretty common to have uh, uh, new features, bug fixes, and uh, in general, over the air updates for Linux that are Linux systems that are deployed on the field. And actually complex autonomous driving uh, systems that are Linux based um, are no different than other Linux systems in this regard. Therefore, we need to be able to find a continuous development model that is compatible with the certification, okay? And in this regard, we have developed internally the concept of uh, continuous certification, okay? I will talk about this later. So how is the Red Hat in Vehicle OS made? Um, we have multiple layers, okay? So the Red Hat in Vehicle OS is the re result of multiple layers where each layer depends on the previous one. And each layer contributes with additional testing, additional review, additional uh, development process practices that harden you know, the, the previous layer effectively. So we start from the far left where we have the open source projects. Here we have uh, millions of open source projects that are Linux based, okay? And what we do initially, so we, we pick like thousands, uh, sorry, uh, 10 thousands of, uh, of these uh, open source projects and we build the, the Fedora distribution. In doing so, there is an initial, uh, you know, set of testings, reviews, and uh, regressions that are run, okay? And then, you know, the, the Fedora distribution that is freely available for desktop systems is, uh, is released. Following the Fedora distribution, we have Fedora ELM. Fedora ELM is an ordinate rebuild of Fedora, just cherry picking uh, like the 4,000 packages that are used to build the CentOS stream distribution, okay? So at this stage, we take Fedora, we pick the 4,000 packages of the next layer and we do an ardent rebuild, okay? If there are no, uh, if there are no errors, then this is the baseline to, to build the central stream distribution. And the central stream distribution is yet another open source distribution, this time with the, the target of the enterprise segment. So the central stream is a, a freely available enterprise distribution that our customers can use to collaborate to prototype and where they can, you know, push new features, bug fixes in order to support the, the enterprise segment. Based on central stream, internally, we add additional testing, additional reviews, additional uh, coverage figures, and we build the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And this is where we make the money, Red Hat Enterprise Linux is a proprietary distribution that is aimed to the enterprise market, okay? And uh, here, RHEL is very, very robust. 
um, we already have uh, uh, customers working on, in mission critical environment like financial transaction where having uh, a bug uh, uh, a loss of service would result in a in a significant loss of money okay and uh, and here we have uh, uh, a support uh, a uh, we have a product support time of 10 years based on rel we do another uh, uh, selection so we move from 4000 to 400 packages to build the certified red hub in vehicle os and in doing so we add additional mitigations additional testing so whatever is required to meet the SLB systematic capability so right so in general here the principle is that we have for this layer every layer is contributed is contributing to provide more robustness okay with respect to the previous layer so here uh, there are some statistics about RHEL. Okay, so RHEL is deployed on millions of systems, so very very widely used. We have a portfolio of more than fifty thousand customers, and uh, we have more than nine hundred engineers working on RHEL, more than four hundred quality engineers, and we have a major release every three years minor release every six months and the bug fix roll up every six weeks and security updates are asynchronous indeed okay so this is just saying that you know rel you know it's it's a very you know widely deployed baseline robust baseline so what is the scope of our certification okay so indeed as we said the target is is in b and we have a core runtime that is uh marked as is in b so the core runtime is the set of binary packages that will uh, uh, constitute the executable code uh, on the car then we have the tool and tool chain that are used to build this core runtime this must be qualified up to uh, SLB um, because the core runtime itself is SLB um, an example is for the GCC compiler for example right uh, then we have tools and tool chain that are, can be used by our customers to build their own functional safety application okay so and this must be uh, qualified um, uh, as as it be as well and finally we have tools and tool chain that are uh, they don't need to be qualified they they, are, they can be used you know to for non-functional safety application or maybe for debugging you know so and these do not fall into the functional safety scope so what are the four pillars of uh, the safety argumentation you already said the foundation is solid okay rel is um, a very widespread robust uh, operating system and we also we also showed the layered approach okay with the different layer of uh, layers uh, that is uh, hardening you know each layer with respect to the previous one so then the second pillar is that the top level safety requirements are met um, as discussed initially we we work with our customers with our partners in order to define the top level safety requirements of the in-vehicle os and our in-vehicle os must be 
and is validated according to these top level safety requirements. The third pillar is following the ISO uh, 26262 development process. Now, indeed, we cannot do that to the letter. It is well known that Linux is not capable of uh, uh, meeting, uh, for instance, part six of the ISO 26262. But we do that by having defined our own tailored approach in partnership with Exida, okay, so that we can make sure that we follow the, the spirit of ISO 26262. Okay, and uh, actually, in the next slides, I will present the details of our own tailored uh, approach. And, uh, and the last is the continuous certification uh, model. Okay, so I already mentioned that for us, it is very, very important to be able to deliver a continuous certification because we need to deliver continuous updates over the year. So we, for us, it is critical to have this in place in order to, to win the, the automotive Linux market, okay? Okay, so weaknesses and remediation evaluation technique. So this is a, a concept that we, developed internally in Red Hat. And uh, as you remember from the Red Hat in Vehicle OS pipeline, there are different layers that are involved in uh, uh, producing the final Red Hat in Vehicle OS. This, this, this slide, so on the top row show what are the layers. So we start, you know, as, as in the other slides. So we have the community projects, we have Fedora, Fedora ELM, CentOS Stream, we have RHEL, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and then we have the Red Hat in Vehicle OS. And you can see that each layer has got its own strengths, okay? And, and the strengths are the development process practices that each layer contributes with in order to make the final ACLB claim, okay? But each layer also comes with weaknesses, okay? And what we do internally in Red Hat we leverage the strengths of each layer to build the ACLB systematic capability claim. And wherever we find a weakness, we also put a remediation in place so that we make sure that all the weaknesses are, are covered. And in the end, we are able to make the final ACLB claim, okay? So to summarize, on the top part, you have the layers, then below the layers, you have the strengths. And then for each layer, the, the weaknesses are identified and for each weakness, we have the remediation. And finally, all of this process results in the evidences being produced. And these are the evidences that are also referenced by the Red Hat in Vehicle OS safety case, right? So, okay. So anyway, if you have questions specifically about, you know, this slide, um, you can, you know, you can contact me offline or um, ask me later, later on, okay? Now, now I will present the Red Hat in Vehicle OS functional safety qualification flow. Uh, 
with respect to the current uh, ISO 26262 safety standard. Okay. On the right, you can see the, the life cycle. Okay, so this is the standard V model life cycle that is used also in the ISO 26262 standard. And I guess many of you are familiar with. Um, the red art with respect to this life cycle, you know, uh, the technical safety concept and validation tests are, you know, considered out of the scope uh, of the in-vehicle OS itself because here, you know, we take the, the point of view of the integrator, if you like, okay? So effectively, so we start from the safety and nominal requirements, okay? And uh, then we go down to the software architectural design and the counterparts are the integration tests and platform tests. So for these phases of the life cycle, we use part six to the letter, okay, to, to qualify um, the in-vehicle OS. When it comes down to the single software unit, so the unit design implementation unit test, we go and use either part 8.12 or a tailored approach that is mixing part 6 and part 8.14. And which approach is used for the single units depend on the unit complexity. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, I'll explain this a bit better uh, later on. Okay. Right, so this is the top left part of the diagram. Okay, so we start from the in-vehicle OS assumed safety and functional requirements and assumption of use. These define the safety scope of the in-vehicle OS. Effectively, these define what are, which packages are ACB versus which packages are QM. Okay, now once we have the, the, defined the safety scope, we go and we define the software architectural design for the ACB packages. So we provide both a static view of the, of the interfaces between the ACB packages and also a dynamic view of the interaction between the ACB uh, packages, okay? And then based on this uh, software architectural design, we define uh, uh the safety and functional requirements that are allocated to the single packages okay and in order to confirm this safety requirement of the single packages we perform an fmea analysis that is based on the architecture and also we do an ffi analysis in order to confirm the safety scope so if you're at this stage, if you're able to meet part six, we move on with the single package qualification. Otherwise, if there are gaps, you can see that these gaps are filled till at the end, we can move on. And as I said, here we are following part six to the, to the letter. Um, an important point is that you can see that uh, we have, uh, the, for the software architectural design, we are leveraging the evidences that we can uh, retrieve from all of the uh, layers that constitute the, the in-vehicle OS, okay? So, and this is something that is true along all the uh, functional safety qualification flow. So now we move to the qualification of the single package, okay? So here, each package is treated as a software unit. If it is a simple software unit, then we can use part 8.12 to qualify it. Otherwise, we have uh, defined 
uh, internally a tailored approach that is mixing part six and part 8.14. And when I say part 8.14, you don't need to think about 8.14 to the letter. Okay. It is uh, uh, a sort of revisited version of 8.14 that um, is based on uh, um, reliability models. Okay. So the first thing is to evaluate the package. If it is a simple one, we go on the left side of this diagram. We do a qualification following part 8.12. So we first evaluate the development process quality standard. We then look at the requirements and the specification of this package. And we look at the requirement-based testing that are available. Does it meet part 8.12? Good, we are done. Otherwise, we need to fill the gaps and we loop over till we converge to, to, to meet 8.12. Uh, if now, if the package instead is a complex package, we use a mixed approach that is uh, uh, weightening both part six and part 8.14, okay? So with respect to part six, uh, we go and look at the evidences that are available to meet the software unit design and implementation, to meet the software unit verification, okay? And affecting the software, the unit testing. And we retrieve an assessment score, okay? On the other side, we retrieve the Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux reliability data, the stimulus condition and the environmental conditions. Okay? And we do an assessment of the failure rate against the expected reliability model. On the other side, we assess the stimulus and environmental conditions versus the allocated safety and functional requirements. We compute the scoring, okay? And we do an assessment of a, the combined scoring between the part six evidences and the reliability data evidences. If the combined scoring results in an acceptable threshold, then we can say, good, the qualification is done. Otherwise, we need to fill the gaps. When filling the gaps, when, sorry, when filling the gaps, we can decide to either fill these gaps from a development process point of view, effectively working to meet closely part six, or we can define additional uh, stress testing, okay, so that we can build synthetic field data to meet, you know, the uh, the, 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 reli the re reliability model expectations, okay? So in this case, we are filling the gap working on the, on the right side of this qualification flow. At the end, when we have a combined scoring that is acceptable, we can say, good, the package is qualified, we can move on, okay? Now, once we have all the packages that are qualified, we need to move to the integration uh, phase of these packages. And for doing so, again, we refer to part 6.10, quite standard. So we identify, you know, for each dynamic use case, that is for each use case that is described in the architectural um, description that is done on the top left part of the V diagram, okay? So we identify the involved uh, packages, we assess the available integration test, and uh, we, we run the integration test. So if we meet part 6.10, then good. Otherwise, we need to fill a gap. And uh, so we, we, we continue to work till we have met part 6.10. Once this is done, we can say that our in-vehicle OS is easily qualified. So this is, you know, 
in a, a bit, with a bit more detail, this is the description of our functional safety qualification flow. Okay. Then continuous certification. As I said previously for us, it is really, really important uh, to develop uh, a continuous uh, certification model that would allow the evaluation of uh, change request to determine if the certification, that if the current say to determine if the current certification is still valid or if there is uh, any gap that must be filled, okay? So the idea in this graph is that whenever, whenever there is a change request, the change request is assessed against each phase of our qualification flow. Okay, so first there is assessment of the requirements and architecture. There is an impact on requirement architecture. Yes, we need to fill the gap. Otherwise, we move on. Uh, there is an impact on the package qualification. Yes, we need to fill the gap. Otherwise, we move on. There is, uh, we assess the software integration. Is the software integration still valid? So if it is not valid, we need to fill the gap. Otherwise, we can move on. So the idea is that at the end of the day, if for every change, if, you're, if you can say that there is no impact on the current certification, the current certification is still valid. Otherwise, we need to fill the gap and we need to produce another certification, okay? So all of this process is indeed supported by automated tools and regression frameworks. Otherwise, it would be pretty much impossible, you know, to sustain this model, okay? So this is the way, you know, in Red Hat we can effectively deliver this continuous certification scheme, okay? So, on my side, uh, this is pretty much everything. So uh, before moving to question and answers, I want to thank you all for taking the time to listen to me. And uh, yeah, now the pre-recorded session is completed. Please fire off questions and I will try to answer. Thank you very much guys. And anyway, enjoy the rest of the open source summit. Thank you.